to my channel, Renzo here. Hello Jim, hello Bob, hello Michael. Hello Jim, Bob, Michael. Hello everybody. Okay. I'm gonna paint today uh, this character from this series, Wednesday. Okay. I'm gonna start just uh, like the painting that I did. I painted few a few days ago. I'm going to paint first the skull as an anatomy study, and then I'm gonna paint the face on top on top of the skull. Okay. Uh, first, just uh, I'm gonna just work on half of the face. Okay, first, let's go. Uh, first, let me know if if uh, everybody can hear me. Okay. Uh, Jim is a bit confused when he said live anatomy study Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday, that's the character. <laughs> That's her name, Wesley Adams. Hello Michael, hello Anita, hello Evelyn, hello Petra. Hello J1, J1. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, okay, everything okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna start just drawing this color. Okay, the colors I have here is titanium white, Cambium yellow, cambium orange, cambium red, permanent lizard crimson, cobalt blue, raw, what's this one? raw umber, and ivory black. Okay, I'm gonna start using just raw umber. And let's start sketching. I'm gonna use first the upper image. Okay, and what I'm trying to do is an adaptation with the lower image. It's not exactly the same position, just trying to, to do an adaptation. For example, the overall shape it could be like here. Okay. Let's see if that's okay. Let me see the space that I, ha I have for mixing the colors. And I think that's gonna be okay. I think I can move the face even a little bit, you know, a little bit to the right. Okay. Now, I always think about proportions, always. I place the eyes, I place the center line of the face. Okay, now here I'm going to place the eye sockets. And just using straight lines, just like using like painting some, drawing some glasses. The nose. Okay, now the eyebrows are on the top of the eye socket. Okay, and then from the the eyebrows halfway to the bottom of the chin, we find the nose. In this case, I'm painting the skull. We find a little bone here. It's called the vomer. Okay, all well, this is dark. I'm going pretty lightly because I'm planning to paint on top of this. Now, the, the, the good thing about, for example, doing this is that we know why we see a highlight here. Okay, we can see pretty clearly on the, on the skull image. Okay, that's the cheekbone. Now, the cheekbone, it goes kind of aligned with the vomer bone that's here. That means the bottom of the nose, cheekbone, and it goes like this. Okay. Now the mandible and the teeth. The teeth are, you know, kind of like that. Imagine that you, I'm going to change to a different brush. Okay, this one. Imagine that you draw a tuna can, something like this. You split that, that in two, 
this form here, that's the form that you're gonna think here, okay, for the teeth. Okay. Now the chin, I'm gonna paint the eye sockets a little bit darker. I'm not using too much paint because I'm planning obviously to paint the, the portrait on top of the skull. Okay. Okay. Now the head. The cheekbone it goes to the ear canal around here. The same here that we don't see in this air side, the ear canal. Okay. Let's read some comments. Hello, Sharon. Hello, uh, Exploring History. Hello, Christine. Hello. history saying you should teach an army in medical veterinary school <laughs> yeah. hello Lori hello Karen hello Lori I love to watch your watch your paint okay yeah. uh, okay the, we study anatomy in the school of art but it's not like a really deep yeah, you know I always fail about remember all the bones the only bones that I remember here, for example, that for uh, this the cheekbone that we call the zygomatic bone, this here, the vomer, there are kind of simple bone here, the nasal bone, and I keep forgetting always, you know, the frontal, the other names, and uh, but don't worry that much about that. Okay, it's not about learning the names by heart. It's more about knowing where they are and know and know how to draw how to draw them more than remember the names. Okay, I got this. What do you think about the size of the face? Maybe I should paint this the face a little bit bigger. Here's gonna be the face, the eyes, nose, mouth. I think that's okay. I know I always love to paint the face a little bit bigger. Mm. What do you think? You know I can change it, I can just draw it again. That's okay. Oh, let's keep it that, that size. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm gonna if this is enough, that's all we need to know. A more it's gonna be a, about observation, okay? That, that's the more important observation. Not the names, but check out all the concave and conve convex areas on the skull, ups and downs. For example, we can see here this. Look at the image. Okay, we can see a bump here, a bump here. In this case, we don't see that on the photograph, on her photograph, because she has hair on top of her forehead. Okay, the maxilla or the mandible. Okay, and again, this area here is just muscles here and here. The score goes like just this. Okay. okay, now I'm going to split this in half, now I'm going to paint half of the face, I'm going to paint it a little bit bigger, okay, because I just, I want to, I want to, because I, I'd love to paint bigger faces on my small canvas, and this way I can work on the terrace easily. Okay, now what what half I paint first? This one or this one? Okay, 
I see the shadow side, okay? Yeah, I'm gonna start with the shadow, the right, you know, side of the face. Okay? Yeah, I think it's gonna be better. Hello, Brian. Hello, Christopher. Christopher is saying, please do planes of the head, face, next. Okay, I'll do it. Hello, Grayson. Yeah, I love that because it's pretty, pretty nice, pretty interesting, and it helps a lot to understand the planes of the face. Okay, uh, now I'm gonna just uh, pick up three, four brushes, and I'm gonna start just mixing some colors. Now, I always try to keep simple, the same way that we, when we draw, we keep you know, the drawing simple with straight lines. About mixing is the same, you know, try to keep your simple mixtures. When it's about the skin color, try to think about the skin color as just a knockdown orange color, knockdown orange color. I have orange here, I can just mix orange, okay, I, with a touch of raw umber and white. Okay, I can get a skin color here. Now, obviously check out if that's, this skin color is gonna work for her face. Her face is kind of yellowish, neutral, pinky. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna repeat this, eh? With a different brush, again, orange, Raw amber, white. Okay. If it looks too orangey, you add more raw amber. Now there are different ways. Sometimes if you check out my video, you're gonna see me doing the same with yellow and red and blue, and sometimes yellow ochre, red and black. Now I'm working today with orange, raw umber, and white. Okay. What we want, make this a little bit darker than this. But that's the same mixture, okay? Don't complicate yourself too much about this. That's about the first stage. From here, we're gonna do a lot of things, add more paint, a lot of retouches, retouches on color variations. Okay, no, I got two values here. Let's separate, let's separate these brushes and I'm going to mix another color here. I added more raw umber because I want to mix a color for the shadow, a little bit of white, okay, a touch of cadmium red. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna paint just half of the face. Uh, I'm gonna start using this color. That's gonna be. I'm gonna go pretty lightly, as you see. Yes, on the air. I just want to paint. Want to paint just one flat value here. Okay. I want to do something more. I, I want to. I want to mix. Uh, I want to pick up the color, the lighter color. Just one second. I'm cleaning one brush. Hello, Anne. Hello, Asma. Hello, Janus. Ok, 
Okay, I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of white. I'm lighting up the first color. I just want to paint this color a little bit lighter. Okay, just a little bit lighter. Let me know any question about painting, about brushes, you know, about materials, about anything. I'm just using almost no paint and using linseed oil to spread the paint on my canvas. Okay, I like it, yeah. I wanted to see a little bit more of a realistic scar. Okay. I uh, got just one value here, just one flat, fa flat value. Okay. I'm going to pick up a different brush. I'm going to light up this color a little bit. Uh, John the painter fine artist says uh, I like how you're starting with the skull first and working on it. Okay, that's good. Hello Phillips. Felix is from UK. Hello Timothy. What brand of paints are you using? I'm using Winton from Winsor and Newton. Yeah. It's not the best brand, it's not I mean it's a student grade Winton. Works pretty good for me. Okay, I'm gonna just uh, light up this color a little bit. I'm gonna mix more. Okay, let's see. little bit of light on the nose I'm just checking half of the face light here you know you see this as a bump here okay because of what because of the you know this cheekbone the psychomatic bone okay this here is here too we represent that with a little bit of light it's not a bright light, but definitely it's light. There's light there. Here, it's a depression, there's nothing. But it's full of muscles and fat tissue. Yeah? And we need to create a bump here, a little bit, for the cheek. Cheekbone and cheek here. Okay. Now. One eye. I'm going pretty slow because obviously I'm trying. To, I'm comparing a lot. It's not like I, I'm just uh, thinking about. I'm comparing a lot. I'm moving my eyes. You know, from the draw, from the photograph to the painting, trying to match this half of the face as much as possible. An advantage as, that I have is that. My, my painting and the photograph is the same size, both are the same size. Okay, I'm gonna work on the eye. I need a tiny brush, number, number double zero. 
Yeah. Uh, Brian Ross asking me, are you using oils or, or clicks? Are you using oils? Christopher is saying, uh, Mot Marte Premium oils is also very good. Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, this, these are pretty uh, cheap oil paints. I'm not recommending them. I'm just mention what I'm using, okay? It's not like I'm saying, hey, use what I use. I know, you know, there are pretty nice oil paints and obviously better. And you know, if you if you love just Winston & Newton, you can use, you know, Winston & Newton, the, the professional grade. This is the student grade. I have used, um, I have more oil, pa I have a different brand here. It's Amsterdam and I have a tubes of Pibio. Okay. Why do you prefer titanium white or zinc white? Okay. Uh, you know, uh, I got used to first. I gotta say that I got used to that that this color. For second, I love that the the white it has some thickness. I don't want to the white to be transparent. I don't like it. Yeah. And that's that's so personal, okay? Uh, you know, I don't I don't like to say, hey, use this because this is better. Uh, no, no, each one is free to use whatever they want. Uh, I I prefer the white to be really thick. I prefer it, the white not to be transparent, you know, because I I want to create contrast. And if my white is transparent, to get to the light, that's gonna be difficult. Okay, now, if, and now speaking about what I'm painting here in just one session. Okay, now, if I want to add some glazes, that's a different story. Okay, that's different because when you want to glaze a painting, you usually, you know, start looking for transparent pigments, transparent oil paints. Okay. In that case, I could just, you know, sink white. Yeah, I have a tube here. Over, it's some place, <laughs> I don't know where it is. Yeah. Thank you, Timothy, Christopher. Uh, I've used Georgian paint. Yeah, that's good. Somebody saying that, who said that? Georgian paint. Oh, oh my God, I lost the comment. Okay. Leveling. Uh, yeah, I'll read the comments. Uh, how do you cover the base layer with a new layer so easily? It's an impossible a nightmare with oil. Yeah, first, I don't use too much oil to my, fair, my first layers. Okay, this one. And one thing that I do when I'm about to do that, I'm gonna use paper towel and I'm gonna take out the excess of oil paint before I try to paint on top of that area. Yeah, because the other, the other way, you know, that's that's not gonna be easy. Yeah, definitely, it's not easy to put more paint on top of paint. Okay, something different happens when we start just, you know, adding a variation of the color. Like here, I establish this value. I can add more and more paint by following what I have here in terms of value, in terms of color. If I wanna make this, let's say, that shadow, I wanna make it light and the light side shadow. That's a different story, you know, that's gonna, be, that's gonna take a lot to change. It's just like painting a background black and then change the background to make it white. Yeah, that would be f pretty difficult. It's just better, in that case, it's just better to pick up a paper, to paper towel and try to clean it or even a palette knife and take out the paint. Okay. Right now, I'm just trying to sketch. It's still difficult for me right now to compare anything, okay? It's just about sketching. I, I, I'm trying to get uh, go pretty slowly and get closer. I painted um, something similar a couple of days ago. It was, the difference, you know what it is that I painted a, 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 a man, a guy, 
an actor that he has a face that uh, obviously we can see some pretty sharp landmarks, you know, in the bones and muscles on the face. But when we paint a woman, you know, in this case, she's a teenager, I think, yeah, pretty sure. And that's different. I'm gonna just pay, I gotta pay extra attention. Okay, I need to stay back. Mm, yep, that's okay. Hello Nate. Hello Chris. Uh, is PB oil good? I prefer Winton, but I have some friends that work with PB oil and they think that it's pretty good. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's something that we just we get used to do or we get, we get used to some materials. You know, I, I tried PB oil and I remember it was like, hey, I prefer this one. I prefer Winton. And I, I have a friend that he, he works with PBO and says, what, which one do you prefer? I prefer PBO. I said, why? I don't know. I mean, the texture is, is better. And I said, okay. And that's exactly what I didn't like about PBO over Winton. But you know, that's just like that. I'm read more, more comments. Hello, Monique. Felicity saying sorry if this is common knowledge, but good luck info about glazing. Okay. Okay. Uh, hello, Joan. Hello, GC. Okay, about uh, glazing. Okay, that's for a different technique, but glazing is just applying a transparent layer of oil paint. Okay, and make it we make that transparent by adding a lot of medium. Linseed oil or you know, any medium you, anyone you know has preference for. Like uh you know, some people love this um liquid for glazing. I prefer just linseed oil with a little bit of trumpenoid. Or mineral spirit, it works pretty good for me. Or sometimes just linseed oil. I'm checking now with the photograph. Okay, that's good. Checking, checking, checking. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and then, for example, one thing about glazing, you need to first uh, imagine that you're using a technique uh, uh, and you've, you've got to let the painting dry. It's just like uh, I paint here for three hours. Yeah, I let the painting dry for a week and then I add glazes. Okay, that's one thing that we're going to respect. We have to let the paint dry. Now, between painting in one session in glazes, obviously we got more of the oil paint, like a ma like material, you know, the oil paint when we add glazes. You know, glazes is just so, it's a little bit different. You got transparent colors, and this is more about the color, okay? It's more about the color than anything more. With glazes, you can just darken up a color, change temperature. It's not like uh, with a glaze, we're gonna change a color completely because, I mean, that's difficult. Obviously, a glaze is a transparent layer. Okay, one thing here, I uh, got a reflected light on this side of the face and when I see a reflected light for me it's just like I gotta I can I have the opportunity to add some uh, new color and you know the color I love I love orange <laughs> but no no not no, not today okay 
Uh, let me think about the background. I think the color of the photograph is pretty nice but I don't know why I think a different color would be better thinking about you know uh, I, 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 I don't know why I'm thinking about purple maybe purple is gonna work better okay I'm gonna mix at least some crimson a couple of blue and a touch of white a little bit of linseed oil Okay, I'm squinting down my eyes and stepping back. The okay, one thing that I want to do first is just lay it up here. This stepping back, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the reflected light? Okay, I'm gonna use blue because. Uh, I think it's, it's gonna. It just. Uh, I got a cool color here. I think a cool color is gonna work pretty good here, for the reflected light. Now it's not like, if you change a different color for a reflected light, that's gonna. It's gonna be like no, that doesn't work. Any color is gonna work. You can just make it work. questions hmm. Michael is saying PV is good yep that's good Peter is saying I understand I use paper also sometimes to, co to cover better okay hello guys studios do you recommend measuring proportion with a ruler via angles or by eye to get it accurate yeah with a ruler that's okay you know we can use any anything any tool the thing that we can challenge ourselves to draw by eye by observation but the, the, the real thing is that when I was a student like no teacher no one ever told me or told the whole uh, my whole class like we have to kind of uh, or our, our goal is just to draw by eye, by observation. No, it was like, you know, you're free to use all the tools you have out there. Okay? You know, that's uh, even uh, one teacher once told, told us something like, you know, if you're a bad, but you know, you gotta find a balance, okay? It's not just one thing. Okay, yeah, I gotta just finish up the sentence here okay you, you're free to use any tool but you have to draw by, by eye to find the balance that's pretty important you know because uh now one teacher just sometimes he was he was like hey use anything you want okay that's not gonna help at all <laughs> it was like what uh yeah it, it was like for him it was like this thing is about practice by practice you're gonna draw better but you, by practice you're gonna just grow you know a strong observation yeah. it's just that if you don't practice it doesn't matter what you use it's not gonna work um, you know you, you have, we have some teachers sometimes that they just they are just like that okay I'm gonna paint the hair first um, 
and you know but for me I have used I have measured always always for me it was about measuring always always you know about picking up a brush or a pencil and doing this all the time doing this and this and this all the time yeah. now I here I don't measure that much okay I compare a lot and I, you know maybe because I have a lot of practice and able to get away with you know, to get uh, to get closer with proportion all of that yes you know I've been painting portrait for years it's just something that I should know you know how to paint a, a how to paint a, a, a face by memory right now yeah, kind of I know you know but obviously it's not perfect. but I'm not perfect drawing by memory but definitely we need you know when when uh, two things that we uh, how we paint or we draw no and uh, there's a phrase up there you know, about this we paint what we see and we paint what we know and even I, I, I have found that, that another thing and you know, another, another words uh, we paint what we see, we paint what we know, and we paint what we want to see. You know, it's, it's just like we paint what we know, you know, we paint what we see, and we make changes based on things that we think that are going to improve the painting or make our painting better. Like uh, in terms of color, contrast, you know, does, uh, I can, I, I can think when I when I heard that I thought about immediately what I thought uh, was ab about ages. I was you know because ages is one thing that uh, are not there on the photograph. Okay, the photograph does usually don't show you that information. I mean, some photographs yes, of course, but not all of them. Ages is just about kind of what ex it's about experience. You know, where just you want to. Sharp an edge, uh, sharp edge, a soft edge, or a lost edge. Okay. Hello, Mary. Yeah. Uh, Timothy is asking me, do you ever work on arches, arches, arches? I don't know how to pronounce purple for our paint. No, sorry. Not yet. Hello, Eva. Hello, Met. Hello, Peter. This will complete in two hours maximum. Uh, no, uh, I, I sometimes I take two hours, sometimes I take three, and sometimes even four. It depends. I I, I have a lot of things to to do here first. Uh, and no, 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 I don't, I don't have like a. a and if I don't finish up the painting, that's okay, you know. I'm not challenging my, myself to to finish up in two hours. It's just like. A, well, I just want to paint as much as possible. Sometimes I got lucky and I got a nice painting in two hours. Sometimes three hours. Sometimes four hours. Let's try and clean some coming red. Let's see, let's see. I'm just comparing right now. Okay, let's work on the nose. Let's work on the mouth. Just a little bit, okay, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
to bright. Okay, I'll read some questions. Do you do you add anything on canvas before painting? Like what? Like a no? I just you know maybe you're speaking about the canvas, the color. I add acrylic. I paint. I tone my canvas with acrylic. Nasser is asking me. This question is in Spanish. If I think that the person with 50 years and we just feel ability for drawing, I can learn to mixed colors and paint. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, genuine is, uh, I think everybody can just learn to paint, you know. <laughs> it's just about practice. Uh, and nowadays we have a lot of instruction, free instruction out there, especially here in YouTube. In YouTube. This thing about painting and painting of, of, of portraits, basically, it's about repetition, repetition, repetition. But always, we need knowledge, okay? Proportions. We need to use a canon. We need to be aware about the things that we do on the painting, in order to be able to repeat them and canon again. Because that's what happens when we paint a portrait after a portrait, again and again. And it's pretty nice, it's pretty fun. Yeah. Not always, you know, sometimes can be kind of frustrated, a little bit frustrated. But that's okay, you know. I don't like the color on the shadow, but that's okay, you know, I'm gonna be able to change it. I'm gonna add more and more paint. I'm making the face a little bit thinner, a little bit narrower, mm, just a tiny bit. What do you think? Do you, do you see? Do you all see her face? Half of the face, a little bit of the likeness? Not yet, huh? Eh? Not yet.
to use refined linseed oil or just plain ordinary linseed oil? Yeah, I just just <laughs> use this one. It just acrylics. That's the the, the brand. Uh, linseed oil. Uh, this is like uh, four dollars. Brian is saying drawing by eyes hard. Sometimes I find it easier, other times not not so easy. Yeah, uh, it has to do a lot of uh, with what you draw. I mean, you know, some people are just easy to draw. Some portraits are easy to, to draw and paint. I remember uh, I have done, uh, I, I worked as a teacher like four years ago, just for one year in the School of Art here in my country. And they kind of, you know, they, they know I paint portraits and they were just taking me like here and there to make live demos. And sometimes in those live demos, uh, it was about like, hey, let's paint. Uh, who, who, who do you want to paint? Let's, uh, let's paint the teacher because usually it was about going to motivate, you know, students to study art. We used to paint the teacher, and sometimes I got the opportunity to pick up a, a model, like uh, uh, to pick up between between you know the people there, and you know. I go over all the people I was looking, for example, like, uh, I remember one, once I, I saw a guy that he has really thick, huge eyebrows. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna paint this guy, you know. I paint his eyebrows and just that, and everybody's gonna recognize him. <laughs> just by painting his eyebrows. And, and they, they just usually gave me an, an hour to paint. You know, because after an hour, uh, people that are not really interested on in art, they just got bored, you know. And if I paint more than like two hours, because once we painted like for another friend for, for a couple of hours, and we started with a classroom like full of like a hundred people maybe, and just maybe at the end there were just 10 people on the classroom, but obviously, those 10 people there, they loved art. Those the ones, you know, the rest, obviously, they didn't like art, but they had, they had to be there because of, you know, it was a demo for everybody, not just for the people that love art. Okay. Okay. Let's see, I paint. Let's see how face there. Mm, I think it's okay. Not perfect, but it's okay. Okay, uh, I'm gonna read some questions. Uh, thank you. Guy studies things. Also, another question Does art really need a uh, meaning? My art teacher keeps attempting to force meaning in my artwork when I just think that it doesn't need a meaning. Well, yeah. I got the same when I was a student because what I loved was just, uh, you know, the old masters 
I love classical painting, this classical approach. If I paint a portrait, I want it to make it kind of realistic, artistic. Not like a photograph, but pretty close to likeness and you know volume, color, and all of those things. Uh, and I got the saying, you know, for some, maybe a teacher, one of my friends, one of my friends, like, hey, you, you gotta look for, you know, for meaning in your, your artwork. And what I did, because I was, I was pretty young, I was thinking about it, I was in my 20s, you know, and I thought, yeah, that would be nice. And I, 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 what I did, I started to create some kind of combination between, you know, painting realism and surrealism. Okay. And yeah, I think that kind of, well, I don't know, but the thing is that nowadays, you know, it's just like I want to paint what, what I want. Obviously somebody come to me today and tell me, hey, you need to add some meaning. I would say, yeah, but that, you know, I'm going to forget about that the next minute and I'm going to paint what I want with meaning or not meaning or whatever. I just want to put in front of my easel and enjoy painting. Yeah. Now, what I enjoy today is painting, you know, realistically, you know, a classical approach, and I love surrealism. I love both things. Uh, Lisa Edmondson is saying, I often use a prospect to measure. I agree, it really does not matter how and what you use, use to paint. You still have to practice. Practice and then practice more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Human faces, after all, are not symmetrical. That's why keen observation is so important. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, Monique C is speaking about how pri prime the canvas is, yeah? with three coats of gesso. Well, I got lost here. Looks like she's answering a question. Oh, I don't read. Okay, I'm screwing it up. Okay. Hello, Theo. Happy New Year. Hello, Shop So Eagle. What do you think about AI art? Wow, to be honest, I haven't seen any. I have seen, you know, some videos in YouTube like say, hey, look at this AI that was created by, you know, artificial intelligence. Yeah, I haven't seen the videos yet. It's just like, oh, pretty nice. Yeah, that's good. That's it. And so another, you know, uh, videos uh, that, you know, the, those, just the thumbnails, but I didn't watch the videos. You know. I, I read something really funny today. Uh, somebody wrote, wrote something like, hey, we need the... AI to, you know, to do the laundry, to cook, to clean the house. In this way, in this way, we have more time to create art. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Yeah. yeah, but I don't know, I mean, what can we say? I mean, maybe that will, people think about AI the same way that artists thought about, uh, you know, photography on those years. Yeah. 
If the question is about that, if maybe AI is going to replace paint, you know, painters or whatever, but, uh, uh, no, I don't think so, you know. Yeah. I don't think so, you know. It's just like, you know, what came to my mind, you know, when I see a pianist or, or, or you know, like with so much talent or I see some, somebody playing the violin with so much talent, you know, that's, that's different if I, if I see a robot just playing the violin, you know, that, that, that definitely is, is not something right about that. I not, I not, you know, I prefer a thousand times just hear, listen, and watch a human being, even with mistakes. But that's different, you know. No. I, I, you know, we love perfection in, in art sometimes, but not in that way. No, 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 definitely no. I rather enjoy, you know, art with, you know, imperfections than than this AR with perfect results. Uh, no. Okay, I think I got this half of the face, not the color. I'm gonna go over the color and I think I'm gonna add a little bit of purple in the shadow. Yeah. Let's go on this side of the face. To continue with uh, what I'm doing, remember, okay, what you see here, this is the eye socket, here's the eye socket. Light here, the cheek, what we call the cheekbone, the zygomatic bone, is here too. Okay. Here the same, here the same, it's just below the eye. We can touch it. Here, the cheek, here the cheek. We need to add light here to create a bump. Okay, because you know, the cheek. Okay, now this area here, we feel, you know, how this, this shape, the same here, the same below. Here is just full of muscles, okay. All those muscles, the only, the only thing that we're gonna see in this area is a shadow here. And now we see, look at the scar. We see why is this shadow there. Okay, the same here. The shadow, the shadow, okay? That indicates, obviously, the position of the psychomatic bone, the face. And all this, uh, there's nothing here. That space is full of muscles. Okay. Who's your favorite favorite surrealist artist? I think is uh, Rene Magritte. I don't know how to mention that in English. I don't know how to pronounce it. Rene Magritte. Yeah. Since uh, uh, that was the Monique's question. Lisa Edmondson is asking me. Some say the best art is meaningless. Okay, Bob Dylan, Bob Dylan was very clear that his art didn't need didn't need meaning. Wow. Wow, that has a lot of meaning. <laughs> uh, did you do anything other? Oh, no, I was already in the same question. Okay. Monique is saying mine is Remedios Varo. Okay, very nice. Mary is saying hi every, everyone to mix things up. I got angry at liquid because it felt like so much got wasted drying in my bottle. Found it in a tube. Okay, that's a good suggestion. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna paint now this. One thing to remember again. Uh, the eyeball here in this area we place the eyeball the, her, her face a little a little bit tilted forward okay. here's the eyeball uh, obviously that's white okay and we got in the mirror around here the iris Okay, and now 
on top of the iris, upper eyelid, lower eyelid. And this eyeball is inside the eye socket. Okay. Okay. Oh, um, this brush. I have more light here. Now, uh, I mentioned that at the beginning that don't complicate yourself too much when it's about color. Just try to think about color, a skin color like an orangey a knockdown orangey color but at the same time you know at some point we gotta change this color because it depends on the light the skin color change depending on the light and I can tell that in the photograph she has more like a, a little bit pinky skin a little bit of cool colors over there okay Happy New Year Anita John Bowyer Bo said, good evening. Have you seen the British TV show from the sky called Portrait Artist of the Year? Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, 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 pretty nice. Yeah, okay. Let's see. I got, uh, I'm going to just change this color a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of camion red and white. Make it a little bit pinkier. a little bit of red here oh Mary are you there uh, Mary I, I send you uh, the link for today today's critique see the shape of the face I'm stepping back and comparing uh, squinting down my eyes and comparing yeah, I think that's good I'm gonna just paint this is raw umber mixing with camion red I'm gonna make this a little bit darker okay that's good that's good okay more just rounder now speaking about this meaning about the painting yeah, there are so many ways. I, I was thinking right now that uh, when somebody says, oh, that painting is kind of telling a story. Uh, I think that sometimes even an expression on a face can tell a story. Uh, maybe we can think about that like meaning. Yeah. Uh, speaking about when I was a student, uh, at that time this thing about meaning it was more about being creative. Being original. Yeah. 
and I remember one teacher, it was, I don't remember the subject, but the thing is, this teacher once asked, we, we need to present something creative. I, I remember I pick up a, a, a wood board that I used to draw, and I hammer some nails, and I, you know, throw some of the paint that I got on my, uh, on my palette that was kind of dry and I throw on this board some uh, this uh, when you clean your brushes that thing that you clean your brushes this always has a little bit of paint yeah? I throw that on my the canvas you know and I uh, went there with my work you know and <laughs> the teacher told me hey you know here we our qualifications it goes from 0 to 20 it means that you got 18, you're pretty good. You got 15, you're okay. You got 10, you know, it's like, uh, you're not doing good. You got 9, 8, that means that you're, uh, you're not doing good at all. You know, like you gotta redo it again. And I remember I got like at 8, I think, or 7. And I said, what? Yeah, and the teacher told me, uh, you tried here to be creative. But even this kind of creation, I can feel that it's pretty controlled. You know, you nailed, some ha you, you hammered some nails, you did this and that. I can just feel, you know, you're thinking uh, his intention was kind of wake up some freedom on, on us and some, in that way find some creativity. And, yeah. Uh, uh, for me, maybe because I was trying to follow the rules about proportion, all of that, that was pretty difficult to, to get that. And I remember what, what, what I did. I don't know. I, I think I took. I don't remember that clearly, but I think I took I took something from the garbage. Yeah, it was like frustrating. I think okay. I don't know. I don't know how to be that creative. I I I, I don't know how to you know fulfill these teachers requirements. I pick up something for the garbage, I remember. Some, I don't remember what exactly. And I just showed that to the, to the teacher. The teacher was, oh, that's pretty good. And I said, what? <laughs> and he was, yes, 18. You know, my qualification was 18. It was, it was pretty good. Yeah. Now the thing is that you know, for me it was just, I wanted just to, how do you say when you want to just save the subject and move on? I didn't care about, about that. I didn't even care about the teacher telling me, telling me that's pretty good. I said, what? This is not pretty good. In my, in my mind, was, is, that, is that's pretty good for you? That's okay. But it's not pretty good for me. I'm just in my head, I was thinking that as soon as I, you know, finish up the subject, I just go back to my things. Okay, stepping back. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I need to mix a lighter color here. I'm adding more white. A little bit of red. Hello George Savescu, hello Salvador. Uh, oh Jing is saying Wednesday 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 Wednesday's face certainly tells story. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Her expression is, you know. Okay, I'm gonna paint the light. This light here goes on top of what? The cheekbone. Yeah? And cheek here. Now we know, now you know, now you will know that why the light here, here. Okay, see a little bit of light here too. Light on the nasal bone. 
here a little bit of light on tip of the nose okay light here okay light here light on the chin okay stepping back okay. pick up a brush for blending Stepping back, comparing. Mm. Okay. Now one thing, if you like what I'm doing, press the like button. Okay. Mm, okay. I'm gonna just. I was comparing. I was comparing. I'm gonna just soften. Paint. Just one second. I'm looking for a nice. Soft brush. Here is, here is. Now, let's draw, let's add some detail to the eye. I'm mixing raw umber, a little bit of a lizard and crimson cadmium red. It's a tiny bit of this brush. width of the nose is not okay Okay, now the mouth. Lower lip. A little bit of light on the upper lip okay the nose is now okay maybe it's about the shadow maybe I have to narrow the nose a lot yeah I gotta just pay more attention to the nose maybe more light maybe more shadow just here Or maybe just moving the shadow on the on the nose. Uh, 
this shadow here. Remember, look at, look at the photograph, you see this shadow here, that's an indication of the eye socket, see light here, eye socket, light here, you know, cheekbone and eye socket, okay? Now you see what is beneath the skin. Okay, another highlight to the, the eye to bring some life here. background okay oh. mm. well, read some comments Mary saying uh, could be me or I think Renzo is faster has he given up on orange? No, no way! <laughs> Using its complement instead, purple? No way! <laughs> uh, Eric saying, with this life gonna be saved? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna stay on YouTube. Oh, she's Wednesday, Wednesday's Adams from Evans family. Hmm. I think that's this is on um, Netflix. I think I'm not, I'm not so sure. Oh, no, not or Amazon. I I don't even know. I haven't seen it. I was watching just Instagram and I saw a painter just that he has painted and that was pretty nice and I thought oh my god that's pretty good are you gonna paint here too and now here I am Maybe you can add orange here, <laughs> orange and purple. I'm not so sure. Yeah, I 
Yes, I think purple, violet purple is gonna be better. Mm. Okay, I'm not so sure about the background. Guys, to this scene, do you prefer the impressionist way of painting, getting straight in, into it without a base sketch? Or do you prepare a, a more sketchy build up by sketching process? Uh, I, I always sketch. I always sketch. Always. Uh, maybe that's not clear, but I always, you know, thinking about all the lines, all the proportions, and always, always uh, go over the same. And if sometimes maybe it's not that visible on on the process. Definitely, that's my thinking process. If, you know, I need more. Okay, here. About medium, uh, notice that I I I used I'm using linseed oil mostly for the background or the hair, but I don't use medium for painting the face. up a little bit of this color and just put it here okay let's make it a little bit darker up here Darken up the shadow. Let's see. Mixing cobalt blue, at least and crimson, white, and a touch of raw amber. To knock down just the color a little bit. Mania, 
Well, it looks realistic. Which brand colors and brushes have you used? Okay, I'm gonna I, I use uh, synthetic brushes, and the oil paint is Winton. Monique is saying it's a Netflix series called Wednesday. Wednesday. When? Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. <laughs> Brush mania, which brand brushes and color have you used? Oh, the colors. I'm going to mention the colors again. Titanium white, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, cadmium red, permanent alizarin crimson, cobalt blue, raw amber, and ivory black. Brushes are just synthetic brushes. Uh, usually, I, I usually work with rounded brushes and filbert. Thank you, Grayson. John Bojo was asking me, have you done portrait with acrylics paint and also colored pencils? Yeah. yeah. You look for my channel and my channel. Look at my channel. There is a plate, some plate lists that I created with, uh, uh, not with pencils, with pastels. And And acrylics, yeah, some portrait with acrylics. I prefer oil paints. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm gonna put more on the mix again. More paint, more white, a little bit of coming red. I'm gonna mix a little bit of green.
Read some questions. Uh, yeah, Ma Mary saying Winton colors are hues. Yeah, that's that's the. Yeah, that's true. No real cadmiums. Yeah. Hello, Sharon. Uh, hello, as a Shar or as her. Mary saying Brinzo's talent is in him, not his materials. <laughs> I keep telling him to green up, green up soil from his backyard uh, and paint a masterpiece. Christopher is in try a uh, bluish highlight, Renzo. Yeah, yeah, bluish highlight would be nice the face uh, but I'm still trying to uh, work now on, on a little bit on color and obviously always on volume on values I added a little bit of green here and I add a little bit of pink you know remember there is always some reddish areas on the face Cheek, nose, chin, upper and lower eyelid. Okay. See now the process here is in back and forth about adjusting values. See, making something a little bit darker, a little bit lighter, a little bit darker, a little bit lighter. Oops. That was my mouse. I'm squinting down my eyes and comparing, always comparing here, a little bit darker. I blend.
read some questions. Uh, hello, Cesarte. Buck, during what you're saying, can you compare the painting to the photo in Photoshop? Yeah, yeah, of course. I will. Just in a minute. I'm just trying to, you know, adjust mostly values and uh, I'm squinting down my eyes for example I don't see light here yet on this area now uh, obviously it's not gonna be about adding more and more light okay we gotta just always think if we don't see light maybe we need to add shadows okay and basically we move between between that between mid-tones lights and shadows lighting up some areas darkening up another areas now i think it's better i'm blending it's too much light on the nose Squinting down my eyes, checking again. Mm. Okay, a little bit of white as a highlight here. A little bit of white tip of the nose, nasal bone. Now let's work on the on the mouth. Open Photoshop. Okay, I got Photoshop here now. I'm gonna capture my screen. Okay. Okay, I'm going to share screen uh, let's see yeah here is Photoshop uh, I'm going to make this photograph a little bit bigger okay uh, mm, okay let's see about this eye here okay I think I gotta just uh, I have too much white here oops
here. Oh my god, I'm not able to find okay. Here. I gotta fix that area. You see? More white on the eye here. Mm, the mouth, the lower lip, a little a little bit thinner. Okay, I'm gonna reverse it. That would be the same like watching a mirror. Yeah, I gotta check out, you know what? Here, this area here, maybe narrow the face, that area. Mm. The mouth, the, something off on the mouth. Man, about, about the color, I'm gonna make it darker. I should make it darker okay let's see values for example if I make this darker and I do the same with the photograph let's see look at that yeah, it looks like I'm missing one light here yeah, I'm missing a light in this area and I have to make this darker Okay. Okay. Let's go back to the painting. Now remember that we have to use do this using Photoshop, and this is basically observation. What I have here when I paint is the photograph and the painting, just like like here next to each other. In this way, it's easier to compare. Okay, that's the idea. Now I can see. What's wrong? I mean, one thing that looks lighter on my on my screen than it really is here on my on my my the painting. Maybe it's my light. Just one second. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, okay, let's continue painting. Okay. Mm, Peter Smith is telling me the left eye is a little bit off and big. Yeah. Hello, Bob. Yeah. I'm using Photoshop, okay? I used and I use all the time Photoshop for all the touches. Okay, let's, okay, I was working on the mouth. I'm gonna continue working on the mouth and then I'm gonna move to the eyes. Okay, let's see. First. I think that's okay with the mouth. Now let's work on what I see when I compare. Okay. I need more white here. Let me know any question. Make this a little bit darker. The third that is here. Fair.
no, the other eye a little bit darker here the white of the eye What else? It was about the eyes. I don't remember. What else? What else? What else? Oh, the, the, the face here. The mouth. Oh, the lower lip. Yeah. Just make it a little bit thinner. soften some edges Okay, what is make uh, add more shadows? I'm gonna add a little bit of orange and raw amber to the background here. I just wanna knock down this color.
gonna mix white and a touch of cover blue <clears throat> oh, hello, Gloria. Far is saying me the name of the software it was Photoshop. Does she have a dimple on her chin? Oh yeah. Thank you, Jonathan. doing okay with uh, uh, with the position of the eyes nose and mouth but something that you know kind of trick my eyes is about the, the, the size of the eyes one eye looks bigger and uh, speaking about the photograph I, I think on the photograph this eye looks bigger than the other one and obviously, maybe, maybe it's, it could be that, but um, it's kind of difficult to copy things like that. It's better just to, even just to try to make both eyes kind of the same size. And instead of trying to copy exactly those little details, because sometimes we, we, we copy, we tend to exaggerate things, you know. I try, I try to, to be accurate, but obviously it's possible to be 100% accurate. Okay, I'm gonna just blend a little bit, a little bit more. One thing for sure, we need to see, I mean, doesn't matter how much paint we add or blend, or we need to see the lights, mid-tones and shadows, okay? And the, the uh, how a little bit of the structure, the bone structure in some areas and muscles here in this area. For example, there's gonna be always a light here, okay, and light here. And every mouth, that's gonna be the same light and shadows. We don't see that on the bone structure, but definitely is is there, and that comes with the and the study of the muscles of the face. I'm gonna try to find a way maybe to do something like that here on YouTube. Uh, I'm not so sure how 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 to do it, but because. 
This thing about muscles is, uh, is more complicated. In terms of adding paint, uh, you know, I imagine myself just painting the muscles of the face and then adding paint on top of that. That's the difficult thing. It's easier to uh, kind of just insinuate the bones. That's what I do at the beginning, like a you know, sketchy drawing, and then paint the face on top of that. But I'm going to try, I'll try to find a way to, to teach the muscles of the face. Okay, Sharon, see you, see you tonight. I'm just using pure black. again making this iris a little bit bigger Okay, now this one.
want to soften some edges. Okay, let's see here. I think I can keep this pretty sharp. Hmm. I'm gonna keep it like this, pretty, pretty sharp. soften here okay soften here okay a little bit sharp just here and then soft okay I have a sharp edge soft edge make it a little bit softer here okay let's think let's think Okay, uh, about the reflected light, I was thinking of something, some light blue. I have phthalo blue, I'm gonna look for my tubes, maybe I'm gonna make it more, a little bit colorful, now the nose, okay, uh, what if I keep this sharp? here okay just this sharp and here soft okay Okay, the same here, kind of lost. Yeah. Mm. Looks okay, I think the same, this area, sharp here, kind of soft. Okay, I'm trying to find a balance, you know. Now about the mouth, uh, the mouth, the mouth, the mouth, the lips looks like a kind of purple. A lot of lizard greens and
Philip Sain, beautiful work. Thank you, Monique. Does any of your eyes look brown and the other blue? I want to check out Monique. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got this eye a little bit lighter than this. Eh? the lower eyelid a little bit darker at the same time here a little bit up okay I think I got one eye bigger than the other or I think I need to make this eye darker darker just with uh, even with the upper eyelid I see a little bit of light on the upper eyelid here a little bit to keep this sharp by softening that edge a little bit without intention I'm going to capture my screen and use for Photoshop again to check out my mistakes here the highlight is gone here on this eye have to put it back again just one second just one second one second guys What do you think? Do you, do you think that I should make the face a little bit darker? The shadow side here. I like it, but you know, when I put my hand, it looks darker. See? Mm. Ah, I have some doubts. Uh, I, I want to think about edges for now. Uh, for example, this. I'm going to have a lost edge here, lost edge here. A lost edge.
I see, for example, one thing that the shadow um, here is a little bit darker in this area. You know, now I I have a second thought thought about that going darker or not. Okay, darker there, darker here. Okay, darker below the nose. Just a little bit, you know, because uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna blend and let's see if that's enough. Mm, I, I like it. I think I got the expression, you know, from here about adjusting values. Get things darker later. Oops. One second. And I'm gonna move the shadow a little bit lower, lower, lower here. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I blend a little bit. I think I'm doing okay. From here, I think it could be about details. I like the colors I have. Obviously, when you change a color, uh, you change so many things. Uh, you know, mm, I gotta do something more about the background. It feels like, you know, it's just it's too, too strong. I mean, the color is too, it's too saturated. Uh, I was thinking, I'm going to add a little bit of just raw amber, okay, here. With that, basically, I'm muting the color a little bit. Just a tiny bit, okay, just little by little, you know. I think that's better. I could change this the the background, but that would be maybe uh, too much. You know, try to change a background. That's not. It's not like it's gonna be difficult because you know my painting is pretty small. The area of the background is not that, not that, it's not that big. Yeah, Christopher is saying I like it, but that could be nice. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah, I think the darker would be nice too. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna just darken up a little bit, okay? Because uh, I think I got the face, yeah? 
I got the expression. Okay, and that's definitely always the more important, one of the important things about a portrait. When you got the drawing right, the, I mean, the likeness, closer. Not perfect, obviously, closer. Then it's about the val about values. Values is about this, what I'm doing right now, you know, adjusting, making darker, making lighter. Hmm. Oh no, what do you think? Okay, I'm gonna try to continue. I mean, one thing that's about values, but remember always check check out your drawing and you photograph and the painting together because uh, when we continue painting and painting and we think we are just, you know, working on, on color, you know what happens, you know, when we add paint, usually paint move the drawing, okay? And all of a sudden we see our painting and it looks like something is off because we got too concentrated you know, and just color. The, what I'm trying to say that you gotta check out from time to time the paint, okay, the drawing, again and again, check out again and again. Pushing this light a little bit more to the right. Okay, that's enough, I think. I'm softening the edge here. Yeah, I think the chain is too pointy. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Lighting up here. Okay, I want to check out the how point is the chain. Yeah, yeah, I got a mistake there. Much better. Now, as usual, soften the brush stroke. Okay. What is I squinting down my eyes? More shadow here below the mouth. Okay, uh, I'm gonna make this a little bit darker here. Yeah, yeah. A little bit darker here. Okay, what about the nose? Okay, a little bit lighter here. Yeah, what else? Darker later, darker later, values, always values, darker here.
back here. Darker here. Okay, well, let's see. The nothing new fee saying it's just me or her upper lip look a bit small. I'm gonna check out, okay? Thank you. Okay. Hello, Melanie. Seems to me like the left iris is smaller than the right iris. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's check out on, on that. I have captured my screen and I'm gonna share my screen here on Photoshop. Okay. Here's the painting. You see the painting is more colorful than... Okay, I'm gonna just adjust the my painting to make it it closer to the photograph. I'm gonna lower the saturation. I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. Okay, there. Now uh, it's a little bit closer to the photograph, and I'm doing this because I wanna com I wanna compare. Uh, and I think if I don't get distracted by the difference between the colors. Okay, let me see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one one thing that Melanie talk, said about the iris, you know. Yeah, I gotta just make it bigger, this one. A little bit. The other eye, I think it has too much distance, too much distance here on the lower lower portion of the white of the eye. Yeah. I still have to, you know, make this lip, this area a little bit. Yeah, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not so sure about this. I'm gonna re reverse it. Let's see. Yeah, one thing for sure is about the eye. Okay, let's go back to the painting. Okay, first the eye. I'm gonna pick up just black and I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Okay, grow here, okay. That's one thing. Okay. What is? Oh my God! I forgot. The eye. I point out some more things. I don't remember. Oh, the 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 lower lip. Yeah. Okay, lower lip. Yeah. 
what else okay here with the paint here I'm kind of pushing the lower lip up okay I'm gonna soften this oh oh I remember I remember here this portion here a little bit up tiny bit up Okay, what about some eyelashes? Didn't paint eyelashes. Saying, well, she pops right off the canvas. Thank you. Hello, where are you? Thank you, Jonas. Okay, I think I think that's it. You know, I mean. Because stay, you know, we can always stay more time painting a portrait and continue finding more and more things to fix. Yep, but... Did you hear that? There was a, a chopper, a helicopter. Uh, it's been like three or four, I think, helicopters just flying over my head having a little bit of problems here a lot of problems here in my country and day after day looks like everything is getting worse okay I think that's it for today if I see it from the distance I like it <laughs> if I continue looking for mistakes definitely I'm gonna find them but I think I have the point that it looks good yeah. uh, the color is not it's not a match of the photograph, but obviously when I decided to change the background, definitely that affects the skin color. And I haven't eaten anything yet. I gotta, I gotta go out to look for a restaurant but looks like everything is closed around here Okay, I think that's it. Uh, I don't know what else I can do. Now, sometimes I use simultaneous contrast on lights and shadows.
okay like for example I could add some uh, uh, here nose the base a little bit of green then a little bit of red and create you know a simultaneous contrast uh, basically two colors two opposite colors creating contrast between them okay and yeah I don't think that's gonna I'm gonna need that for today's painting on some paintings definitely I feel that I need to add some you know some touches of color That's it for today. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Herb jumps in her chin on all right, look different from the photo. Okay, I'm gonna check on that. I'm checking, I'm checking. Maybe it's, maybe it's about the light on the chin. I don't want to move the chain that much, that much, and it could be here. Looks like somebody's knocking on my door. Okay, that's it. Oh yes, don't forget to smash the thumbs up. Don't forget to, to press the like button. That helps a lot. Okay? Mm. I'm gonna eat. <laughs> Thank you so much everybody for being here. Thank you everybody and Joan, hope to be able to see you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, Joan. Yes, definitely. Tomorrow we're in a half class. Yeah, Saturday. Oh, by the way, before I go, uh, we ha I have a Patreon account. I always forget to promote. Uh, but that's on the, the screen, you know. That's on the that's on the screen. But I, I have a Patreon account where you can join and watch recorded paint and lessons. That's the link where you can join and. join in I don't know if you can hear the sound okay, can you hear the sound it's just this a helicopter just it looks like pretty pretty down pretty over, over my head the sound is pretty strong okay thank you so much everybody and you can join my patreon account check out some live some recorded penal lessons and we can paint with me, just like here, but obviously I see your painting, critique your painting every Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, like the whole week. <laughs> Bye everybody, take care you all. Thank you for being here. Bye.